blood vessels that connect with other blood vessels to find a different, to get to the same place, right? So in this case, this is called a surgical anastomosis, these coronary artery bypass groups. So blood vessel, uh, you know, blood coming out here, going out here looks like your left subclavian here, right? They stitch this blood vessel onto here and it's routed down to here. So blood, it can supply blood to uh, this area of the heart down here because this area over here was clogged up, okay? Post-surgical anastomosis. And these anastomoses happen naturally as well, right? In the video, you'll see why. But what I wanted to mention here was this, why this area gets clogged, which I also talked about, you know, why this is prone to damage and why you're dead pretty soon if it happens. But when you look at something like this, everybody's heard of clogged arteries, right? Probably heard of uh, atherosclerosis, right? But you got blood flow going through here. Normally it has a, night, a certain passageway going through it, and then it starts to get blocked, right? Kind of like a a clogged drain, like you get guck on the inside of it and you just lose flow and it becomes clogged up, right? And so when you say you have a clogged vein, you know, I'm asking you, is it the same as like a, a pipe that has gunk stuck on the inside? Can you just stick some kind of rotor rooter down there and like scrape it off? The question is like what the plaque deposit in vessel wall, what do we mean by a vessel wall, right? I kind of often talk about these tubes running through your body, right? You think of like these plastic tubes, but they're not plastic tubes, right? They're very like dynamic sort of pulsating, uh, expanding, constriction and stuff like that. And all that has to do with like the makeup of the vessel wall, right? So this is like your digestive tract, right? Where you had that inner layer of the epithelial, you had a you had the lamina propria, you had those different layers, right? Mucosa, you had a uh, muscularis externa, right? So something like that, not, not the same, but you have layers of stuff and each layer has these different purposes, right? So when we're talking about the difference between arteries and veins and arteries and veins and capillaries and different size arteries and stuff, these will be what we're referring to, like the differences in these layers right here, because they'll have different properties. And you know, when you look at the, actual layers, those properties will be effect, reflected in those layers. So you got these three layers that we'll talk about, the intima, the media, and the externa. And so again, as we're going through them, you want to kind of pay attention to uh, what the properties are. That's usually how we'll char characterize different, different vessels, right? And then all the vessels in your body, all the bigger vessels are gonna have these three layers to some extent. As they get smaller and smaller, they'll start to lose some of these layers until you get to the capillaries, you know, which are gonna be very, very bare bones at that point, right? Because each, each, each vessel that we're gonna look at has a, different, a little bit of a different function. All right, so that most inner layer right here is your tunica intima it's intimate with the blood or it's internal it's the most internal one right? and so this is where the blood is flowing right through this lumen right here right? so blood is flowing through and it's lined with this lumen is going to be lined with the simple squamous so it's called the endothelium right here and usually when we talked about simple squamous it was about a very flat surface for gas exchange right or or uh, oxygen or nutrient exchange where you want a very thin layer. In this case, those simple squamous cells are providing a nice, smooth, flat surface for uh, blood flow, right? So you can avoid turbulence going through a nice, smooth surface for blood flow. So that's your tunic intima, and that's what it's lined by. A simple, a simple squamous, all vessels are going to have them. And in fact, if you remember your heart, we had a endocardium. That was a simple squamous. The end of the heart basically merges on with these vessels right here. And it's very similar to the lining right there. Right? And the other thing about part of the tunica intima here, you see this little Swiss cheese looking thing right here? 
this. Underneath the brown part is a little bit of layer of loose connective tissue, just like any other membrane. And then you got, <clears throat> then you got this Swiss cheese looking thing. That is an elastic membrane. Okay. And so that's part of the tunica intimate. And anytime you have elastic, what do you got? You got an ability to expand and you have an ability to just kind of store that energy and recoil, right? Expansion and recoil. So from the smaller veins, do they have an elastic membrane? The smaller arteries are going to have them, but the veins, usually only the bigger veins are going to be noticeable. And even with those, and I'll show you some, some pictures of those in a second. Um, even with those, it's much smaller. So here's a, here's a artery right here. And this is like a rat leg that they did specific damage to the tunica intima, like in the endothelial layer, right? So you got, you could hardly see an epithelial layer here. And then you'd have a little bit of a loose connective tissue, and then you'd have that elastic membrane right here. All right, so those are, that's your tunica intima right here. And when we talk about those clogged arteries, right here, that's all happening in your tunica intima. Right? It's going to be a whole mess of stuff. Basically, it's an inflammation response that goes crazy right here, but it's happening within the tunica. So, you can't just scrape this stuff away because it's inside that cellular layer right there. Right? It's all happening inside the, uh, the vessel wall right there when you have this clogged arteries like that plaque buildup. Okay, so this atherosclerosis right, is a particular uh, condition right here, right? So there's your endothelial layer, that simple squamous. There's a little bit of connective tissue under it. Here's this next layer, the smooth muscle. And you'll see that there was some kind of breach in the endothelial right here. Some, something happened for whatever reason. And one of the reasons it happens a lot in your LAD or your coronary arteries is because there's an enormous amount of pressure. You got a lot of blood going through here. If you get any kind of damage, it's going to like open that up more. Once that opens up, what happens for some reason, uh, cholesterol, lipids start building up inside the wall right here. So your immune cells, your macrophages come in to deal with those. They start chomping away at the lipids and cholesterol that are in there. They love them. They just keep eating them and eating them and they get fat and they just turn into foam cells, right? So most of this is going to be filled up with these macrophages that are transformed into foam cells. So you got all craziness going on. And what you're, going, what you're doing is blocking this whole passage right here. And for some other reason, this next layer, which is the smooth muscle layer under it, the tunica uh, media, these cells start coming in and proliferating for some reason. They want to join the party. They want to get in there and start proliferating, and you're causing a more uh, bigger lump right here. So basically, you're closing off this whole, this whole like, passageway with this growth under here, right? So it's not necessarily cholesterol in your blood that's flowing freely in your blood. It's cholesterol that gets inside this layer that's damaging. And obviously, if you have high cholesterol, especially the, what is it, the LDL is the bad stuff, right? Gets in there and those macrophages start uh, taking care of them, but it, they, it has secondary problems with that. So that's your atherosclerosis, and that's basically what's going on. And it's going on inside your tunica intima right there. And while we're there, uh, so when you look at this lung, uh, this, this slice right here, and you're trying to identify the difference between arteries and veins, right? So this is like a regular staining. This is that mesentery slice. Right here is an artery. Right here is a vein. And these are pretty obvious to tell the vein is, I mean, the artery is pretty structured. It's, got, it's very strong. It's kind of holds its shape. Whereas the veins, even like these big veins start collapsing and they're more floppy looking. But the other thing is, if you look at stains that are covered, uh, you know, stain for elastic, then these arteries really stand out, right? This is it right here, is your inner elastic membrane right here. Does anybody not see that? <laughs> right, so this means this below the internal to this, toward the lumen, 
and you know, it's kind of falling apart right here, but that would be your tunica intima. And then this is gonna be your next layer, which also is gonna have a lot of elastic fibers. You're also gonna have a external elastic membrane and then you get to your next layer right there. But so that's, this is a big obvious one, but anywhere you look around, right, let's look at these bunch of vessels. And you could tell that like between all these blood vessels right here, here's the artery right here. These are veins right here. You can't see that. You're not going to be able to see. All you see really is like some undefined. Um, yeah, the veins are more like, uh, they're pretty nondescript. Like the arteries are the ones I'd ask you about the layers because the veins, like all you could see here. It looks like a bunch of mush. Yeah, it's, you could see if, you know, you could also look at this one. Some of, some of these show the difference between the smooth muscle and the uh, connective tissue coverings a little better. And then if you look, you could also see uh, the elastic membrane right here. See that? So this is all smooth muscle. And in this one, oh yeah, I've really seen that other stuff right here. Some of the sections are gonna have it like right here. See this? Yeah. Yeah, so that's the same stuff we were just looking at with that, but it's, it's stain red. And so this is all smooth muscle. And then you get over here, in this case, the collagen is stain blue, so that's your outside layer. So that's, a, that right here is actually an artery, a bigger artery, and this right here is a vein. And again, even, even with this staining, it's, it's much less distinct, right? They're kind of floppy, they're not super, but you can kind of make out the muscular versus the, uh, that. you can see a little bit of that elastic membrane as well. This is a big vein, so it's got this elastic membrane. But mostly you want to look for that, uh, like in this one in particular, you know, look for the difference between, let's say, these right here where you can see that inner elastic membrane and like these right here. And so even though these are, this one and this one are roughly the same size and this one's even smaller, the artery's got that distinct elastic membrane around them, right? All right, so that's your intima. And then you get to, after this, um, that inner, when it's present, that inner elastic membrane, the Swiss cheese looking thing, you come to your smooth muscle layer, your tunica media. Right here. And then this, for arteries, particularly you're gonna have a lot of those elastic fibers that we just saw, plus a second Swiss cheese thing right here. That's going to be your second their outer external elastic membrane. So when you could see it in an artery, that tunica media is bounded kind of by those two elastic membranes right there. So once again, the tubes in the body are very, uh, you know, they're, they pulsate, they move, they expand. It's all because of this, this tunica media as well as the elastic fibers and all these, right? But the, the fact that they can squeeze, make this lumen shorter or dilate and make it bigger, right? Means that with this tunica media, you're gonna be able to kind of control blood flow through that. It can contract, it can vasoconstrict. And so there's your outer layer. And again, here's your internal elastic membrane. This is the tunica media. It's got elastic fibers in it. And then this is your external elastic membrane. So, and the other thing is when we're looking at the difference between uh, the different arteries and veins, notice the, the tunica media doesn't really, the size of the vein, it's not such a big deal. Even though if these are the same size, that media is like a really thin strip over here compared to your arteries right here. And then within arteries, you're gonna see a difference between what's called these elastic or conducting arteries, which I'll talk about a little bit, and these muscular ones. So the muscular ones have a much relatively thicker 
even though they're small, relatively thicker tunica media. Hence the name, muscular, I guess. And so again, I'll talk more about those as we go into the specific, specific veins, but this is just an introduction. And then like any of these tubes, right? You got the outside connective tissue layer, or superficial connective tissue. A lot of them have a lot of elastic fibers, right? And basically it's supporting it, giving it a little more structure and it's sticking it to, you know, to the surrounding structures right there. So again, look at the cadaver pictures. If they haven't been dissected out at all, you'll see that, you know, your vessels are all connected to each other. Like you have arteries and veins running alongside each other. You have different arteries. They're all going to be connected through that connective tissue layer. Again, tunica media. Again, that's one of the major differences. You'll see really obvious differences between these. And then the last one, the adventesia. And then the other part of that adventesia, that outside layer right here, you see all these little blue and red dots in here, inside here. And you see some yellow stuff. So there'll be nerves and stuff going through here. You'll have blood vessels. So your blood vessels, the bigger blood vessels, have their own set of blood vessels, right? Because smaller ones can get their blood from the lumen itself. They have ways to leak out and get the surrounding tissue. But it gets big enough, and that that is not close enough. So you have blood vessels have their own set of blood vessels. So fossa vasorum is the vessels of the vessels. And that's in your tunica adventitia. So when I talk about the difference between the arteries, um, the different size arteries, you want to understand that as arteries leave the heart, and branch off into smaller and smaller arteries, they're going to change and they're going to change based on the fact that they're facing very different pressures, right? So the blood being pumped out of your left ventricle going into your aorta, right? That's an enormous amount of pressure right here, right? And so the, the vessels that are closest to the heart are going to be facing the most pressure, right? Even, you know, during whether they're in a just pump state or relaxation state, they face a huge amount of pressure. And then you'll see, right, see this oscillation right here as you get closer to your heart. These oscillations are big in between when your heart just pumped and when it's relaxing. That is systole and diastole. I don't know if you've ever heard of these terms, but that's the contract, the contraction and the relaxation of the heart, right? So there's a lot of variation close to the heart right there. As you move away from the heart, right, I mean, pressure goes down, but also you see those oscillations kind of temper out, right? Does everybody kind of understand that principle right here? So if you put your finger on your neck right there to your, you could feel your pulse. Everybody kind of has an idea where to feel that. You could kind of feel your, that pulsating right there, right? That's your, that's reflecting the pumping of your heart right there. If you could feel it also on your, on your uh, radial, you have your radial, radial artery right there that you could feel it a little bit less, but you could still feel it, right? By the time it gets down to the capillaries, there's no oscillations, a very smooth flow of blood into those right there. And the difference is how that is going to be mediated, this sort of mediation, the equali equalization of the pressure is going to be done by these arteries right here. The veins, on the other hand, once you get past the capillary networks right there, you'll see the pressure decrease and decrease. Here's zero. Basically, the pressure in your veins by the time it gets to your veins and going back to your heart is zero. All right, so you got almost no blood pressure going through there. It's, it's got to move through your system in a different way than your arteries are. So the pressure is going to be highest, close to there, and it's going to decrease, but, but it's also the oscillations between those two increased and decreased pressure is going to kind of mediate out. And veins, by the time we get to veins, that pressure, by the time you reach the venule penis end of the capillary bed, it's going to be like zero pressure. And that's reflected in the vessel wall, right? These are much floppier, much weaker, right? It's kind of hard to think, like, how does blood get up, move upward, right? Again, in zero pressure, right? So that's, we'll talk about that when we get to veins. So for your arteries right here, 
here the pressure is highest near the aorta and then is going to continue to drop right as it moves away from the aorta right there so that pressure difference and how that pressure is sort of uh, equalized out is going to be done by your elastic and your muscular arteries right here right so your elastic arteries these are often referred to as the conducting arteries because they're basically moving huge amounts of blood like your aorta all those different sections of your aorta and the first major branches are part of these elastic arteries and your muscular arteries are called the distribution arteries these are most of the named ones that you got to know and these are bringing your blood to your muscles and your internal organs and stuff like that so your elastic arteries these are the ones they only have like uh, I think these are the total of them, right? Your pulmonary arteries uh, from your pulmonary trunk leading out there, your aorta, branching off your aorta, you got your common carotid and your subclavian. Right? Those are those ones you got to know right there. And then your different sections of the aorta, but they're all part of the aorta. And then that first branch off the aorta, your common iliac arteries. That, that's the entirety of these elastic arteries right here. Right. So that, that, those are easy to remember. They're the huge ones coming off there and the very first branches off the aorta. And not even all the first branches, just those ones right there. Whereas your uh, muscular arteries, and so off your, say, common carotid artery that's going up toward your head, that's going to branch off into your external and internal carotid. Those are muscular arteries. Your common iliac is going to branch off into your external and internal and turn into your femoral and so on and so on, right? So those are your muscular arteries. Most of the ones you got to know are those muscular arteries right there. So the difference between these two relatively, again, these are relative to each other, not to veins or smaller arteries, but relative to each other, you get a relatively thin vessel wall and a large diameter. When you have more room, Right there, blood flow is much easier, so there's low resistance in these. So blood is just moving through, All right? But it still faces a lot of pressure because it's very close to what's just being pumped out. But there's low resistance, blood moves through fast. Whereas a thicker vessel wall, you decrease the diameter here, you're gonna increase the pressure. So elastic, muscular, more muscle, more elastic fibers right here in the, in the elastic ones, right? So you're going to have a lot of elastic fibers in your tunica adventitia, in your tunica uh, intima, and in, your, and in your walls, in your smooth muscle walls right there. So you have a lot of elastic. They expand and they recoil very well. Guess what these do? They control constriction. They control blood flow going in by contraction or relaxation of these smooth muscles. Right, so these are going to undergo large pressure changes and we'll see kind of mediate those changes, whereas these are going to like dilate and constrict. So here's your left ventricle in a very schematic form, a round circle. Right, here's your left ventricle. Uh, when it contracts, it squeezes out blood through that aortic valve into your aorta. Right? When it's squeezed out, because this is an elastic membrane, that's gonna bulge out, right? It's gonna hold all that blood. It's not just gonna flow through. So the blood that would have gone straight through here, it kind of fills up this expanding aorta right here, right? So the contraction of the ventricles, pushing blood into the uh, elastic arteries, those elastic arteries are gonna stretch. When those stretch, because it's elastin, it's gonna store that energy, right? That's an important point. When your ventricles relaxed in diastole, your ventricles relaxed, and what occurs here is that elastic recoil is going to contract, right? It's gonna shorten the tube or, or smush the tube and push the blood forward right here. So even though this is relaxing, the blood flow is still flowing. Uh, it's, there's gonna be this push of the blood after the ventricular relaxation. Right here. So there's a 
it's going to kind of mediate the pulse in that way. And so let's go to that video. Illustration um, is, is designed to show you elastic recoil in right, so, uh, arteries. And it, it will... In this case, as you said, this is upside down right here. This is your, this right here is actually the heart, right? The ventricles pumping blood out of there right here. And then this, the balloon, is the elastic artery. A green balloon um, attack. So what happens is that um, as the left ventricle pumps blood into the aorta, as the, uh, as the ventricle pumps in ventricular systole, the, um, the elastic fibers and the tunic immediate of the aorta uh, stretch outwards. And then when the heart's in diastole, the, um, the elastic fibers recoil, forcing blood not back into the heart, but around the uh, systemic arterial circulation. So I'll show you that happening. If I fill the balloon up with water. So right here, right? Here's your aorta expanding right here. Blood's flowing through, right? And that's what you want to notice right here. Turn the tap off, indicating diastole. So he just turned the, you just turn the faucet off. That's when your heart is just relaxed right here. But what you want to pay attention is his turning on and off of the faucet is like your systole and diastole, right? That bump, the contraction and relaxation of the heart. And then the blood flow downstream of that expansion is what you want to kind of pay attention to. And then back on again. In the case See how it's steady. And then off diastole, on systole, et cetera. And the elasticity. So in other words, instead of if this wasn't elastic, he'd be turning that on and off and the water would be going smash, you know, on, off, on, off, on, off. Here you get this steady, a steadier stream down here, despite the fact that it's going on and off. The balloon keeps the blood, or water in this case, flowing through the arterial circuit. So that, even though it's a green balloon and some water, kind of shows you what's going on with that elastic loop. Now you look at this, and you can kind of see, there's the faucet handle right there, right? Blood is being pumped out. And then relax, pumped out, relax. But you got that stored energy here, so you got a relatively constant flow because of this whole expansion and the ability to push that out. Right? That's a big thing for physics, you know. So I mean, physiology rather. So you know, if if you haven't taken it, if you have, uh, you probably already talked about all this. But anatomically speaking, it's because of all those elastic fibers within that elastic artery right there. Okay, so here are, those are your, those elastic ones, right? Your aorta, and all the way down to those, uh, the common iliacs, right? So here, the elastic one in kind of light right here. You got the aortic arch, first branch off. On the right side is your brachiocephalic trunk, which breaks off into your common carotid, and your right subclavian, right? Your right common carotid, your right subclavian, and then... The next one over is your common, your left common carotid. And then the next one over is your left subclavian, right? So all these are those elastic fibers that are doing that expansion recall. Same thing all the way down here uh, until you get your, your common iliacs. So the first branches, as soon as you start branching off further than that, right? So again, your, here's your um, right common carotid, it's going to branch off into your internal and external carotid arteries. Your subclavian is going to branch off into your axillary, which will branch off into your brachial, which will branch off into your, you know, your radial and your ulnar artery like that. All right, so these second ones, the second branching are those distribution or muscular arteries. Okay, oh yeah, here's some other ones. I was mentioning to uh, Cynthia earlier, she was asking about, I was showing you the models. Most of your models don't have, uh, I mean, you could find them on a real cadaver, but it is kind of hard for those pictures. So I'm using the models or the pictures on your worksheets. So here, here's the diaphragm, your <clears throat> aorta, uh, your descending aorta right here, or your abdominal aorta. The first branch, the noticeable branch in the middle, right here, uh, it's unpaired, right? But it branches off into three areas right here. 
What organ is over here? Oh, liver. Liver. Right here is your common hepatic. Remember, hepatic means liver, right? Mm -hmm. What organ is right behind here, behind the kidney? Spleen. Here's your splenic artery right here. Right? And then this middle one is going to be called your left gastric. It's going to your stomach. Right there. So that's your celiac trunk. Oops. Right there, your celiac trunk right there. And then the next unpaired one down right here is your superior mesenteric. Remember all your mesenteries that were attached to your small intestine? That's your superior mesenteric. The next one down is a paired two. These are your gonad, your gonadal arteries, right? If it's, this is a male, uh, these are the testicular arteries. If it's a female, they're your ovarian arteries. And then this, this unpaired one down here, the one, the single one, is your inferior mesenteric, right? So you've got a superior and inferior mesenteric arteries. All right, that's just kind of, uh, you know, this is, that's more like the lab stuff there, but I thought I'd bring them up right here when we're talking about these, right? And the other thing you definitely want to know are all these uh, body sites where you can get your pulse, right? Your common carotid artery. These are all sites where the artery is relatively closer to the surface and you're able to actually, you know, you press down on it to some extent and you're able to feel the pulse right there. Okay. So that's where you can actually palpate. You know, you can feel that, uh, the pressure that, that's mediated by the heart. And it's also, uh, you know, you'd be doing that as nurses. Also as a EMT or something, somebody's bleeding down here you're gonna to want to apply direct pressure right to the artery uh, proximal to that uh, cut right there to stop the flow, right? Your femoral artery over here can stop blood flow to the leg, or if you had to, in worst case scenario, tie a tourniquet, right, to stop the blood flow for that area. These are, these are those points right there. All right, so the big thing with those arteries right there, those muscular arteries, are they're going to be, because that muscular layer right there, they're gonna be able to control blood flow to any given area based on the needs of that organ right there. And they're gonna be able to do that like normal circumstance, might have a certain sort of diameter, right? But maybe sometimes, like, so there's always a bit of tension in there. When you want a little more pressure or a little less blood flow, you can constrict this right here and that'll decrease blood flow to that area if you want to dilate it right there you could increase the blood flow right and usually all you're doing is constricting it more by sympathetic here's we didn't really talk about this during our nervous system stuff but all these blood vessels are innervated by your sympathetic nervous system right and you got a normal tone that they keep, right, by a certain amount of input to it. And when you want to increase or decrease the diameter, you're gonna increase the input, right, make them contract more, right? And that'll, that'll uh, decrease the, or that'll decrease the diameter, right? When you want to widen the hole, widen that uh, diameter, you just relax a little bit, you kind of back off, right, on the input into those muscle cells. So, and again, we didn't talk about this too much, but you're normally when you talk about sympathetic, parasympathetic input to something, maybe you want to relax, you increase parasympathetic input. And this because there's no parasympathetic input. It's just kind of a, a gas pedal, think of it as for the sympathetic. You could either keep a steady cruise control or you can put on the brakes or accelerate. And that's basically all, all that is. Oh, nice. Now they can start in construction on the house. All right. So you can see this, right? Here's sympathetic nerve innervation. Here's a vein. Here's an artery, right? Your arteries are getting a lot of nervous system input, like controlling the blood flow. Your veins are just basically these more like passive reservoirs, uh, just kind of responding to whatever blood flows in them right there. 
So for lab stuff, right, that's what you want. You want to identify all those different veins and arteries and veins. Most of your, a large portion of your veins are running alongside the arteries and have the same names, right? Not all of them do, like your carotid, there's no carotid vein, it's your jugular veins going down here. But your brachio and your brachiocephalic trunk uh, veins are a little bit different because there's two of them. Um, axillary, all the arm stuff is the same as far as your deep veins. Um, there are some superficial veins that have no, no corresponding arteries. For your abdominal aorta, um, you, you have a different system down there, which we'll talk about later, but you don't have those necessarily. You don't have the celiac trunk or, or we don't really ask you to identify that stuff, right? So a lot of these deep veins, again, you'll find the same similar name as the arteries, right? Your veins also have a, another set running more superficially close to the surface of your skin. Right, that you could actually see. That's those are the ones you could see on your arm and stuff. Like if you're pumped up or something like that. These are the these superficial veins is what you could see. It's also where you would draw blood from this medial cubital vein. All right, so you want to learn those main ones. Right, your cephalic one is running uh, lateral down your arm right here, and then kind of runs all the way down the arm. Your basilic one over here. Uh, joins up, or rather, really, your medial cubital joins up with your basilic on here, on the medial side of your arm right there. And that, that's where usually blood, either, either your cephalic or your medial cubital, is where you uh, draw blood from. And that's what we just said right here. All right. So that's just a little lab stuff right there. What was I just, oh, the muscular arteries. Right? They branch off into smaller and smaller arteries until you get to, you know, a different named type of artery called arterioles. Just like you went from bronchi to bronchioles, you're going from arteries to arterioles. So eoles apparently means a smaller something, right? It, it's like a diminutive term right there. So arterioles, the smallest arteries. And they may have the same tunics when they start out, the bigger arterioles, they're eventually, as they get smaller, gonna lose that outside connective tissue layer and really just kind of embed themselves in the organ tissue right there. So they're not gonna have a distinct, any kind of tunic external. And then you'll also see more scattered, smooth muscle fibers around them rather than that clear, smooth, uh, continuous tunica media. All right, eventually, in the smallest ones, you'll just have these strips right here of those smooth muscles, right? And so once you're inside an organ, getting toward the capillary bed, these arterioles are gonna be very important in directing the blood flow toward or away from those capillary beds within the organ. Just like your, those muscular arteries are directing away from uh, controlling blood flow amounts, you know, to or from major regions, these are gonna be directing blood flow within the organ. And so, Again, vasoconstriction, when your uh, muscles contract and your, the diameter of the lumen is smaller, and then the relaxation, again, when it re, uh, relaxes and opens up. So in the video, I, I did mention this, the shunting right here, this uh, arteriovascular shunts right here, right? So if this was closed, you'd have like minimal sort of blood flow. I don't know if I did this one here. Let's just show this one right here. Here is the capillary beds right here. Right? You could have blood flow through these or you could not have blood flow through these. You have like miles and miles and miles and miles of blood vessel in your body. You have like apparently enough blood vessels you could wrap around the earth about two and a half times, right? So you've actually got more blood vessels than you have blood, right? So at any given moment, not all of your capillary vessels are filled, right? So your blood vessels naturally, as a normal occurrence within in your blood vessels, you're kind of shunting blood away from any given capillary bed, right? So you could do that by closing off what they call these pre-capillary sphincters go feeding into the capillary. You close them off and you direct all the blood through these thoroughfares right here. 
Okay, and or a you could call this a vascular shunt right here. Okay, so just by you're just basically clogging off these and directing all traffic through this. Way earlier about this the vascularization of your skin of the skin and how it uses we use it to control uh, regulate body temperature, right? When that little shunt was closed off, you're directing blood flow right up towards your epidermis right there, right? When you're hot, when you're too hot, you want to direct it to there, and then that way you can lose some of that hot blood gets to your surface there, and that's when you have hot skin, you feel all flushed, right? You're losing, you're kind of cooling off by bringing body, your body heat to the surface where it can cool off, right? And you did that by closing off this pathway right here so that blood is more directed toward here. In the case of when you're cold, right, you want to retain this body temperature here, you could open this one right over here and then blood flow will be directed to this other region right here. Right? And that's the whole kind of general purpose behind these shunts right here. And that's another function of these arterioles right there. All right, so that's it. Know your arteries and how they change as they move from the heart, how their functions change and how that may be reflected in the vessel walls. Next up, we're gonna start looking at capillaries and the different types of capillaries and their functions. And then after that, we're gonna be looking at the veins. And for the veins, mostly we're gonna be looking at how blood is returned under zero pressure to the heart. All right, that's it. See you later.